Hey guys, it's Barrett from the Gimpy Camper. Uh, we just spent the weekend down at G Creek Campground, also known as the Hawasi Okoye Scenic Park. It was a pretty nice place. It's pretty reasonably priced. It's $15 a night. As with a lot of other cheaper campgrounds, that means that there's no hookups or anything like that. I was kind of disappointed that they didn't even have a dump station. But I think they kind of lean more for primitive tent camping and that kind of thing. You have to be careful on their website, I won't say that before I forget, because you know it has like parking dimensions and it says that basically the site that I say that I think was 65 feet by 13 feet as far as parking and they advertise it as a pull through site but most of those sites are really sharp. I got a little bit of video of that coming up, okay? As far as cell phone coverage goes, we had on Verizon, we had two bars of 4G LTE and pretty decent coverage. Because of the sharp curves in the campground that I was talking about at the campsites, you know, I really used caution if I had more than a 20, 25 foot trailer. We do find some that are better. I'm going to give you some recommendations here. But mine, you know, even though it was sold as a pull through side I had to back into it at first I didn't really think it was going to work it ended up working pretty good the other negative aspect to it is they do allow generators you know we bought an inverter generator I have the one from Harbor Freight the Predator 3500 it's been a great generator it's pretty pretty darn quiet uh, I'm guessing that somebody complained I think it was the only generator that I saw that I heard while I was there and so in their policies it basically says you can run a generator for 15 well back that up in their policy it says to use it uh, the least amount that you can I had a park ranger pull up at about 9 15 9 30 the first night I'm guessing because somebody complained about it even though it's not loud and he said that uh, you know their policy is they ask people to only use a generator for 15 minutes every two hours and guys as far as air conditioning goes in this Tennessee heat that don't get you too far and nothing after 10 o'clock which I understand but that's why I probably won't be going back there in the summertime to RV camp at least so let's see what else we had to say. You know, as far as the spots go, the best spots are the handicapped spots. They're the only ones that are straight. They're not pull through sites. You have to back into them. Um, but if you're ineligible for those, most of the other better sites um, that you can fit a longer camper in are at the end of the circles. And so if you look at the map, you know, a lot of the sites that I'm going to give you they're kind of on those corners of the circles because you know you have a straight line that goes through and just kind of cuts that circle off at the, the edge there and it'd be pretty easy to get a, a longer camper in some of those spots but some of the better sites that I saw were A34, B6, B4, A13, B5, B11, and A9 you know, if you're just going to tent camp or hammock camp, all of the other sites are great for that. Uh, they're all fairly level. They all have plenty of car parking. Um, but, you know, if you're going to especially take anything more than a pop-up, you're going to want to stay at one of these that I just called out here. And there are some pros and cons for the campground. Um, I'll go over those real quick. So on the pro side, I mean, it's, it's very reasonably priced. And the other big pro that I have is, you know, if you go down the Hiawassee River, whether you start at Webb Store, you start, take their shuttle and go up from there, or you just drive up to the, the main inlet point to where you get on, you know, there's a ramp I have a video of here at the end there's a ramp right at the campground where you can take out at so if you have more than one car and you 
you know, shuttled your stuff up, then you have a way to go back up and get your car back. It's pretty awesome for that. I gotta give them credit for that one. Now the cons for this is that the the spaces are cramped for big RVs. There's no hookups. But the biggest one for me is that generator policy. You know, I've had other people tell me that when they've known people to stay there, they run a generator 24-7 without any issues. You know, I can see it both ways. Um, but if they're going to allow RVs in there, I can understand saying no like open frame construction generators because those are a lot louder. But just my opinion. Um, need to be able to use our generator. That's all I got for that. So, you know, the bathhouse was nice. Um, it's not climate controlled. And there is a fan in there for some circulation, but it gets kind of warm. But it's really clean. And there's a nice playground. Uh, took some pictures and shot a little bit of video all around the park. I'm going to let you guys have a look at that, and I'll see you next time. Guys, if you're going to bring a camper, you got to be careful with this stuff, because most of these sites back here are like this, where they're real curved over. And the internet makes them look like you got plenty of room, but not so much. Alright, so this is campsite B11. Predator generator, we'll have a review on that shortly. It's fairly spacious. I'm just hanging out here with the solo stove. I love this thing. No smoke, virtually. Hanging out at our campsite here. We got a little creek. We'll show you some more tomorrow. Just gonna hang out with the fire tonight. Cook some fajitas on the new griddle we got. We got some fajitas going here on our new Blackstone griddle. We'll view that whenever we get a a little more knowledge about it. Yeah, the playground here is pretty nice. It's right next to the handicap spots, which are the only straight spots in the whole campground. The others are marketed, marketed as pull-through sites, but it's real uh, subjective on what you can pull through them for most of them.